Hey, my name is Subword and today we are going to find out how well the RTX 3050 is performing in VR, which is probably not what many would think of when talking about this GPU, so let's talk about that. As you might know, the desktop RTX 3050 is performance-wise between the GTX 1070 and the 1070 Ti, and thankfully it has 8GB of DDR6 RAM, which will be very helpful when running VR games. And as these two older cards are able to run VR headsets, we could assume that the RTX 3050 should be able to do so as well. Now today's test rig is driven by an RTX 3050 Zotac Twin Edge OC, the processor is my i9-9900K at stock speeds, which is basically the same CPU as an i7-10700K by the way, and 32GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM on an Asus Prime Z370A mainboard. I was using Windows 10, newest drivers and of course I installed all games on an SSD. And of course my VR headset, which is the Oculus Quest 1 which I connected via an Oculus Link cable to my PC. Oh, and keep in mind that the RTX 3050 isn't officially supported by Oculus, but you will see in a few minutes or seconds if that's an issue or not. Now, as it's not as easy to benchmark VR games like conventional games with the Quest, you need to excuse me for actually having to record my desktop to do so. And it turns out that every game looks different in doing so. Also, my MSI Afterburner OSD didn't work in all titles, so I had to run some extra software in the back as well. Well, you will see. Additionally, I was using FPS VR, which is a small $3 app from the Steam store, to display metrics in-game, but unfortunately it wasn't possible to record the corresponding OSD, which I only saw inside of my VR headset. Now, the Oculus Quest 1 has a refresh rate of 72Hz for its screens, and a resolution of 1440 by 1600 pixels per eye, resulting in a total of 2880 by 1600 pixels, which is 25% more than WQHD, also known as 1440p. And of course you would want 72 FPS for these 72Hz screens, if possible. And for your information, I was running all games in at least this native resolution. Some titles can actually use higher resolutions via super sampling, which is possible with Steam VR, resulting in better anti-aliasing and sharpness, but that can actually reduce the performance by quite a bit. Now I had to record the screen via shadow play, which is actually reducing the performance by around 5-10%. to Also consider that the Quest is just streaming a video to the headset, which has to be rendered on the PC first, utilizing the GPU. So using other headsets and not recording the screen will lead to an even better performance. But then again, other headsets also might have a higher resolution or a higher display refresh rate than the Quest's 72Hz. Now today's first game was Moss, which is something I would call a lighter game performance-wise. The FPS seemed to be pretty stable at 72fps with medium settings and the Quest's native resolution. One might think that MOS isn't that demanding, but actually some of the scenes didn't run at 72 FPS when I was trying the high graphic preset. Nonetheless, the game was perfectly playable on medium settings and the RTX 3050. Next up was No Man's Sky in the Quest's native resolution and low settings, in which I was actually using DLSS on quality settings, which is even available for the VR mode. That way I almost saw 72 FPS on average, but keep in mind that the performance is better without recording and I was able to get around 72 FPS most of the time, but not always. But that actually didn't cause me any motion sickness or such, to which I'm usually quite sensitive. So this wasn't the most luxurious and premium VR experience, but the game is definitely playable this way. Arizona Sunshine was working perfectly fine on very high settings, and I was even able to use a resolution scaling of 125%. The 72 FPS were basically stable all the time, even with recording, so there might actually be some headroom for more resolution scaling. But as you can see, the game isn't exactly visually breathtaking, but you can easily just finish the whole game like this way. 
In Skyrim we are, I was using high settings and the native resolution, getting 72 FPS most of the time as well. The game was just perfectly stable and playable and I would definitely consider this a enjoyable way to play through the whole game without any worries. You probably even could further raise the resolution for a sharper image and still get a very acceptable experience, which isn't too surprising considering the age of the game in general, I guess. And last but not least, I was testing the game you probably came here for, which is of course Half-Life Alex. I was testing the game at low settings, which actually still look very good and not that different from the high settings anyway. Combined with the quest's native resolution, I was able to get a very stable 72 FPS almost all the time. As you can see here in this example, there were some scenes in which for a short moment the FPS dropped but then quickly recovered even though the scene didn't change and the VRAM wasn't full yet so I don't actually know uh, what caused that. But I can tell you it still worked great and I never experienced that when I wasn't recording. And I was actually playing the game for about 60 minutes that way. Now as a conclusion, I would definitely say that in today's broken GPU market, the RTX 3050 is one of the best budget GPUs for VR that you can get. It's definitely better than a GTX 1660, 1660 Super or Ti due to its bigger RAM and even better than the GTX 1070 or 70 Ti thanks to the DLSS support which will even be supported in more and more VR games. If you don't expect super luxury graphics and super sampling all the time, I don't see why you shouldn't use it unless you have a headset with a very high native resolution maybe and a refresh rate like the HP Reverb G2 or the HTC Vive Pro 2. The RX 6600 and 6600 XT could be alternatives, but be aware that those cards don't handle VRAM as good as the RTX 3050, which could cause issues in games that get close to 8GB of VRAM usage. Now that's all for today. Please leave a like if the video was helpful for you. That would be helpful for me. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.